All right, I, I hope to have this done well before an hour here, so I'll just jump right in. <clears throat> okay, so prior to this release, we had already had the ability to uh, DQ process objects. Um, I'm going to re be reviewing a little bit of that today. Um, and I'm just going to be reviewing all of our JMS stuff just to give people a quick level set if they're viewing this for the very first time. Um, so basically, we're going to cover the messaging manager configuration down on the agent, uh, enqueuing process objects, dequeuing, and then we're going to run through an example. Um, first note I'll make is that the JMS manager is only available on agents. Uh, we don't provide uh, JMS manager functionality in the cloud at this time. Um, so the configuration is basic standard uh, broker uh, connection information. You need to have your provider type, your connection factory, your URL context factory, your your provider URL or any vendor specific properties. And today I'm using ActiveMQ, so you'll see a little bit of those. Um, and then for the destination listeners, obviously we can communicate with both topics and queues. So you need to have their JNDI locations. And um, the process uh, that is going to be consuming the messages. Um, to do a, an NQ, um, this, this is new, this release. It's available uh, under the step type of service call, advanced. And there are four, excuse me, five properties, four required and uh, one optional. Uh, that's going to be the message manager name as defined in the messaging manager that you, we just configured. Uh, the destination name, which is going to be the queue of the topic. The, the message that's going in, which could be a process object, XML, or just plain text and the format upon which is going to be written out to the, um, the queue or topic for that matter, to the destination. And then to unwrap the root element, this is really just a, a handy thing if you want to drop JSON on, uh, on a destination that doesn't have a root um, property. Um, it makes, you know, most people are expecting JSON if you want just an object of JSON to not have it with a root, which is necessary for XML. So it's a, it's a handy JSON utility. Um, to DQ uh, process objects, uh, these are configured in the message managing listeners. Um, the processes that are used to DQ them need to be deployed down to the agent. Um, and the listener for the uh, for the listener definition, the Q or topic listener definition, needs to be the AE real time JMS listener class that I have listed here. This will be available in documentation, and the default service will be the name of the process that is being invoked. And that being said, I'm going to jump right into an example. So I just want to set up the example first before I show you all the parts that I have created. So basically, <clears throat> I'm looking at a, uh, an employee provisioning example where you know Workday has a whole bunch of awesome um, recruitment technologies where they can do an entire workflow of getting someone onboarded. But what happens when we decide to, to hire somebody? Um, they have outbound messaging in the form of SOAP, and we can receive a message, and then we want to kick off our, our business processes for uh, – provisioning all the resources for this for this new employee. So again, this is just purely as an example. Um, so the way I've constructed this is I would take that new employee event, drop it on a new employee events topic, and then uh, in this case, we could have had each of the queues that I have here listed as just processes and provision directly, but to make this, since this is a JMS Example, I made it a little more intricate where we have processes listening for those on that topic. We'll then re NQ um, the employee event on each individual queue. And then off of those queues, they'll be listened again to run a process that will actually make the call out to each of the, each of the target systems. Okay? So to make, this, to make this happen, we need to have a new employee process which is going to take and ingest the employee event, and then we need a, a NetSuite NQ process, a Gmail and Salesforce NQ process. These are going to actually DQ the message from the to topic and re-enqueue it into the into the targeted queues, 
And then off of them, there'll be a NetSuite, Gmail, and Salesforce provisioning process that dequeues from the individual queues and actually invoke the target systems. Um, I'll make a note right now that I did not have time to finish up the Gmail, so that's just, it doesn't make a call to him yet. <laughs> but Salesforce actually provisions. And that's right about it. So I'm going to jump right into showing you how to make that all work. All right, so I have everything tagged with JMS demo so we can see all the parts to this. Um, I'm just going to quickly go down the laundry list here and show you what I've created. Um, some of this is help from Luke. Thanks a lot, Luke. Um, we created, I, I started to create a Google uh, business process connector. We have the NetSuite business process connector, and we have a Workday business process connector. So basically what happens with the Workday outbound message is it only really gives you an ID of what happened, and then we need to go back out to Workday and get the details of that before we can proceed. So we have a Workday connector to actually go up there and get that information. Um, I also put an intermediate process object in this to show you that, you know, a lot of times you're going to want to transform this data into an, your organization's <coughs> message type or, or form type. So I created this object called info user, which is going to be my intermediate uh, data type that's going to be that's going to be created from my workday, from my workday, uh, my workday data set, and then it itself is going to be transformed in each of the target system data sets. We can't invoke an NQ process in the cloud. We have to wrap that process itself. So I have a cloud process called my employee provisioning process. So this is going to take, this is going to get invoked with. And, and actually, Joe, before you move on, so, so basically what you're saying is that in order to talk to JMS, you have to be on-premise because that's where the JMS systems are going to reside. Exactly. And so basically you're going to accept the uh, message coming from Workday in the cloud into the cloud process, and the cloud process is essentially going to forward that message to an agent process, which will then use the JMS on-premise on to then um, dispatch it in a publish, subscribe type of a manner via topic, and basically you have also created process listeners, but they don't have to be listeners in our code. They could have been other systems that are just listening on the same topic. Exactly, yes. We had to create uh, a, a real-time uh, SOAP ingest to ingest the, the call from, from, um, from Workday, and then it calls basically all it does is pull out these two IDs and invokes this cloud process with a type and the ID of the action that just happened. All right, so that those are our input fields here. Um, and then we make this connection to the Workday um, connector that we had just seen earlier. This is going to pull back the Workday user object. I'm going to convert um, I'm going to convert that information into my info user. Uh, this is this is this actually works, but I'm going to leave it alone. Basically, what I I changed the last minute from text to an email type, but it, it still works. So I'm just going to leave that be for now. And then once that gets converted, we end up. You notice I just jumped right into the agent employee provisioning service. So now this is going to route the process down into the agent. And the input types here are going to be the new info user and whether or not we were successful. And we're going to NQ. Notice the service call advanced NQ. This is running on the agent. Now, th at this point, we'd be running on the agent. It would be useful to, for you to show the property uh, tab again, property panel oh. again. So okay, that goes too fast. Would... Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. So, so general... So here we're running on the agent. Okay. And our inputs are the user and then the field. And when we NQ, um, we're going to be targeting a broker that I called uh, the provisioning broker. Uh, the, the topic I created is a new employee topic. The field is going to be the info user. And for this case, I decided to serialize it as JSON. And notice I, I unwrapped it to make it 
unwrapped. And then I just assign a, a success and return. Okay. So that's basically, that, that puts it down into the topic. Now, you take a sales force. Now, this is my sales force and queuing process, but again, this is going to dequeue the process and end queue it into the Salesforce specific queue. Okay. De the it's going to dequeue the message from that topic. It's going to pull one off of that topic and end queue it onto the, onto, the, onto the Salesforce specific queue. So you notice here, again, this is running on the, on the agent. Input type is going to be info user again, um, and it's required. And when we come into end queuing now onto this queue, again, it's the same broker, and this is the specific Salesforce event queue. And this time, I'm formatting the process as XML, and I'm unwrapping it. The, the, the message, excuse me, yes. The message is coming down onto the queue as XML. Um, so <laughs> recapping, the message, the, the request came from Workday, was put on a topic, the topic, um, the this uh, uh, is grabbing a message, uh, the, the request off the topic, and then queuing, because we want to be able to show queuing, um, a the, the request off towards uh, Salesforce, where a process is going to do the rest of the work. Right. So did this process subscribe to the topic? Yeah. Right, I'll show that in a minute when I get back to the configuration on the agent. I just want to go through the processes first. And then the last portion of this will be the Salesforce provisioning process, which DQs, again, running on the agent. Input type is going to be the info user. So obviously you could do this multiple ways. We could have this queue accepting a Salesforce specific event and have done the transform to the Salesforce type in the process off the topic. There's lots of things we could have done here. I just chose to do it this way. And then when we call the Salesforce input now, now this is using the Salesforce connector. Now you'll see, and I'll have to play with this a little bit to actually get a successful request in the Salesforce, because Salesforce doesn't allow you to delete users. And I've already created this user once, so you'll see that in a second. Um, so I had to change the username of the user from Workday that actually is the user that this example is going through, because I don't have availability in Workday to create new users. Um, so I had to change his username. And uh, so you'll notice normally you would just map these to a username that came out of it if it was in the right format. But right now the username coming out is just their like their uh, their net ID. Um, so it has to end with a, it has to be of an email format. So I just quickly grabbed the username that came out of Workday and added at InfoTest on it. And the email needed to be, I just duplicated it for the email also. But you'll notice here, we're taking the info object that we constructed and we're filling in the properties of this Salesforce request with those objects. Okay. So I don't want to go through each and every um, system because they're all, it's basically all the same. And, and you just put that other queue in between to kind of show... Just to like, show the difference between topics you, you and queuing. You could have done that work right inside of Absolutely. The, first, the first guy. Yep. Okay. Just to kind of <coughs> queuing and then theoretically, <coughs> the, well, yeah, they couldn't be listed as a queue, so it's point to point. So it, Right. So okay. if they wanted to have... They could have made that a topic, and then they could have had actually multiple subscribers to that as to well. To listening to it. Which one would be ours. Okay. Right. Yeah, so I just put the queue in there in between just to... To highlight the end Yeah, okay. to, yeah, exactly. So if we come over now to the agent. So right now is the cloud server, and now I'm going to the agent. And it's under admin and messaging services. And here's my, my uh, provisioning broker. So for... Active MQ, it's of other type, J other JMS. It's uh, Connection Factory, name is Connection Factory. Uh, I don't have security on mine. Here's my URL and my initial context factory. Here's the topic, and this is this is specific to this configuration is specific to Active MQ. All topics need to be come in the initial context factory as topic dot and the name of the topic, and then you can you can 
map it to a local JNDI name. So I just kept them all the same. Um, uh, and then, so to do NQing, you don't need to define listeners because it's just going to use the broker directly. But it just so happens that everything we are putting on, we are NQing messages to, we're also DQing from. So everyone is listed as a listener. Okay. I'm just saying that out loud so everybody can internalize that. Okay, so we come down to the topics, and that's the first place we come into. So you'll notice there's three of them from the topic here. We have three separate listeners for the topic, one for NetSuite, one for Gmail, and one for Salesforce, but they're all listening to the same topic, and they're all using the real-time JMS listener. And then we have the three specifically for um, the queues. And again, those are on each individual queues, NetSuite going to the NetSuite provisioning process, Gmail to the Gmail provisioning, and Salesforce for the Salesforce provisioning process. Okay, so this is the, this is the SOAP uh, request that's mimicking the outbound request out of, out of uh, Workday. Just, so when I, when I hit this, <clears throat> it's already done. And we go back here. We'll start in the cloud, <clears throat> and you'll see our Workday on Hire process, which is very simple. It's just basically calling Workday Sync RT, okay? And then that's calling the Employee Provisioning Service, which again is pretty simple. It's getting the employee details, it's converting it to the user, calls down to the agent, and responds. So now if we go and look at what's going on in the agent, we can see that Salesforce faulted, and I'll explain that in a second. But we first came into the employee, the agent employee provisioning service, and we had these NQ processes run, and then immediately we had the provisioning processes run because they're pulling from them. Now, so this is the, this is how you would debug this if it failed. So the reason I'm failing is because Salesforce won't let me throw another one in there. But you'll be able to see here, I turned, I turned logging on for all of these processes. So you can see on the input from this, um, I actually have the XML input from the Salesforce that made it all the way down through. It's pulling the phone number off of the workday request. It's enqueuing it in both sides and coming back out. That's basically the example I have and how to make NQing and DQing work. I have a question That's regarding the um, the JMS provider that you set up on the on the on the agent. Uh, so how you, how okay. do you manage the actual li libraries that are necessary to run the JMS? Um? Okay, so the agent will load up. There's a directory on the agent on the agent root. Informatica secure. So this is my agent directory. So this process engine custom lib is where you're going to drop any jars that need to be loaded up into the web app. It's an extension of the web inf directory and allows you to um, maintain jars that you need for both database connections and JMS. And oh, the one thing I didn't show is my queues. You'll notice when we started I didn't have anything. So on each of my queues I had one enqueued, one dequeued. And then if I go to my topics, down here is the one I'm working on, the new employee topic. You'll notice that one was enqueued, and it was three times dequeued. That just shows the flow of everything through. <clears throat>